Welcome, and in this video we're going to discuss how Galileo was wrong. First of all, let me say, I think he was right that the Earth does go around the Sun, but he was wrong in the fact that he could prove it. He thought he could prove it, but he couldn't. Before we start into the video, though, let's think about how do you know that the Earth goes around the Sun? What direct evidence do you have that the Earth goes around the Sun? I ask this question to my students a lot, and they say things like, the clouds are moving, um, and you know, all kinds of things. Well, clouds don't move because the Earth goes around the Sun. The clouds move because the sun changes position in the sky, and there are air currents, that kind of thing. The fact is, for 99.9% .9 of the human population, people know that the Earth goes around the sun because of faith, because they trust the science community. And not in a bad way, that's actually a good thing, uh, but very few people actually have direct any direct evidence and experience for themselves that the Earth goes around the sun. Now, in ancient times, the question that people were asking themselves was not, does the Earth move? What they were asking themselves was this, what is with the planets. In ancient times, Ptolemy had come up with a system where the Earth was at the center and the planets were going around the Sun, because that's what they seemed to do. They seemed to go around. However, the planets would seem to do this sort of thing where they were moving along, and then they would backtrack. And that was a little strange. And so in Ptolemy's system, the planets are going around the Earth, but in order to explain this sort of backtracking that they do, they used epicycles. In other words, they had circles on top of circles. And so the planets, they said, were going around these other circles as they were going around the circles as they went around the Earth. And people continued to observe these planets for years, but they noticed that this model simply didn't work. The model didn't accurately predict the planets, um, the position that the planets had over time. And so they modified it and they put more circles. And so they added more they call this epicycles. Um, but that, that also didn't work. And so by the time we get to the 1600s, people are, are trying to figure this out. Um, and so some of the things that were proposed that Copernicus said was, well, maybe the sun is at the center. Well, this didn't really solve the problem. Um, because even putting the sun at the center, while mathematically it, it's an interesting move, it didn't solve the problem of the planets. There were still the epicycles uh, and it didn't explain that movement around. Also, there was no evidence. There was no other evidence for the reason that the sun should be at the center. And so uh, people were trying different things. So here's why they thought the planets didn't move. Think about being on a train. You're on a train and you see in the foreground there's a tree, in the background there's a big mountain. As you go by, the tree seems to move but the mountain seems to stay in place, and the tree moves in relation to the mountain. It moves to the right, the mountain stays in the same place in the back. This is called parallax. The apparent positions of the objects change relative to each other because one is far away and the other is close. Okay, And so people knew that if the stars were far away and the Earth was moving, then we should observe that. We should observe this stellar parallax, and then the stars would look something like this. They would move relative to each other. However, this was not observed until 1838. And so even using telescopes, they did not observe this parallax in the time of Galileo, even though Galileo was positing that the Earth moved. In fact, there was an even better astronomer, much better astronomer, by the name of Tycho Brahe. He didn't use telescopes, but it was actually his data that Kepler used to find his calculations for the ellipses of the, the paths of the planets, which were ellipses. And he said that the sun goes around the earth and the planets go around the sun. He didn't observe stellar parallax, so he had to conclude that the earth was not moving. Um, and so here's a quote from a famous historian of science, Thomas Kuhn. He says, like Bellarmine, most of Galileo's opponents agreed that the phenomena were in the sky. In other words, they agreed, okay, what Galileo was seeing was there. But they denied that they proved Galileo's contentions. In this, of course, they were quite right. Though the telescope argued much, it proved nothing. The solution finally came along when Kepler realized that the planets are moving in the paths of ellipses, not circles. The other key came in when Newton posed his theory of gravitation. Now there was a mechanism for the fact that the Earth could go around the Sun, and the Sun could hold the Earth in orbit by this mysterious, still very mysterious force called gravity. This episode with Galileo, of course, is always used to prove that the Church is anti-science. But the Church is not anti-science. In fact, the Church is the most, uh, the Catholic Church is the most welcoming religion to science that there is. I mean, the person who developed the Big Bang Theory, Father George Lemaitre, was a Catholic priest. The fact is that the Church, it was never Church dogma that the Earth does not move. Never. The tribunal who tried Galileo 
um, they made a mistake, and the tribunals are not authoritative teaching sources. Um, you know, and there were other issues involved as well. Galileo had insulted a friend of his, a lot of things. And so here what I'm going to do is present some quotes from some, from some science historians uh, about this issue, and I think they are well worth reading. I'm going to go through them kind of quickly, but if you want to read them, you can pause the video. So thanks for watching.